This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nebenes Supercharger, and behind me here you see Tesla Model Y. It's been about six months since I tested it last time, and it's time to retest it because, you know, we have a summer range test, but we don't have winter range test. I should do this as standard to test both summer and winter to see how the consumption ranges. So, um, yes, uh, this time we actually have original rims and tires. So, let me show you. We have 19 inch, these aerodynamic rims, which is probably good for consumption. Hakkablitta R3. And uh, let me see, uh, dimension. Where, where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. 255.45.19. Wait, is it staggered? I don't remember if Model Y is staggered. Uh, let me check here. Uh, 255.45. Oh, okay, same, same. All right. So, let me show you the plan is that we are going to do you want to agree to collect no 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 nine no 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 okay here we go so the plan is that we will go to Rudshugdan back again we're going to measure the the distance uh, error so by the way let me before i forget about it i'm not plugged in i need to reset some of this stuff oh this is so clumsy now uh, it's less user-friendly. I'm going to reset this one as soon as we start. You see here, the odometer. We actually have some distance on this car. So uh, this car is actually six months old and it's done some, yeah, some kilometers. And also I'm going to show you here. Wow, look at this. The wonder of uh, uh, heat pump and octo valve. We only consume. <laughs> okay, so it is four degrees Celsius. I consider it winter-ish. Uh, four degrees Celsius uh, is kind of winter for many places in Europe maybe not in no the Nordic countries but okay and you see it has cell temp so it's not too hot I didn't cheat to heat up the battery or anything so all right now we're gonna do a full lap and then we see uh, we will do the 120 kilometers per hour test first I actually came here earlier this morning and it was just cluttered with left lane huggers uh, now it's getting better because it's 8 in the evening so all right let's reset and then off we go but shit, how do you do this again? Oh, all right, all right. All right, we're on the move. We have to cruise 122 on the speedo. How is the windsock hanging? Okay, very little wind. Four degrees Celsius over here in Minnesota. Uh, yeah, oh, almost no wind. And also, it's been raining early today, so the road is, I don't know, moist. Uh, it's not completely dry. So that's also a slight disadvantage versus uh, dry road and sunny weather. So we're trying to make the driver conditions kind of bad. But I simply couldn't drive this morning because uh, there was so much traffic, they would block my lane. All right, I've uh, been driving a while. I'm gonna show you something here. By the way, this is a 110 zone. It's still interpreted as 100 zone. But if you look at the um, distance here, you see that it flicks over to, uh, uh, if you look here now, and also look here, you see that uh, we reset Sky My Tesla right when we started driving. And then you will see that it flicks over to 46 at 0.6. So it, it seems to be a round up, not, uh, let me see, there, there, you see 46, 45.6. So that would be useful if I want to do some 1000 kilometer challenge or something or uh, to estimate the distance because eventually this one i think if it goes to 100 it will also start uh, we'll also cut out the um, uh, the, uh, the decimals and also tesla of course they made things worse with the version 11 oh change uh, yeah they removed decimals uh, this is this software version there is one step backwards really oh now now it says 110 okay okay that's good well you guys can see it now you guys can see it 110 all right, and over here it's five degrees Celsius. So average uh, temperature is around five degrees Celsius on this run. But we'll see, it might drop because it's just the uh, start of the trip. Uh, we have to go actually all the way to Dahl and back again to do a full uh, 182 kilometer cycle. And then the bridge today seems to be uh, blue-ish, yeah. They can change color. We are passing by Harman now and man, I've been testing so many legacy automakers lately and 
it's such a breeze to come back to Tesla and use uh, all the pilot here. The Tesla all the pilot is just rock solid. It can stay within the lane. It doesn't do any weird jerky movements. It should also be able to deal with the mergers. So we're going to see it. Curves, whatever, no problem. Uh, let me see. This section here, it used to do lots of brake slowdowns. Okay, yeah. So Tesla has been updating the map so that it doesn't slow down on every <laughs> so half an hour, uh, half a minute over here. Okay, here's the merge. Let me see what happens then. You see, line is big. Okay, now it slows down. It tends to slow down. Still takes a long time before Tesla updates the map. But still, you know, this the autopilot even works on, on B road. Okay, here under the slowdown, very annoying. Yeah. Still not perfect, but at least on roads that are a few years old, then it, it works no problem, uh, no slowdowns. Uh, but you see, okay, it even works on B roads, regular highways, Lande way we call it. It even works on road without middle lane marking. That's how awesome Tesla Autopilot is. Well, we just turn around at uh, Rutsak now, heading south now. So the see consumption right now is 218 watt uh, per kilometer. Oh, the car is gonna break again. So there, 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 freaking annoying, stop that. But let's see now. I always brag that Tesla is really good at estimating percentage. So I navigated to uh, Circle K Dahl, not to the Ion Charger. And the car estimates 18% at the rival. Okay, let's see if we get 18% at the rival then. Now let's do the sound test again. I need to redo it. I don't know what I did last time I did the range test, but I'm gonna listen to it again based on lots of other cars I've been testing lately. And of course, the EQS pushed the limit to 11, so everything else shifts downward because of the EQS. The EQS was just top-notch. But what I noticed with this car, first of all, is that you almost have to shout because it's so loud in here. We have 19 inch wheels, 18 inch would be better, but I'm not sure then you need special rims for it to fit. But one thing I noticed is that the treble, the treble is unnatural, it's sharp and unpleasant to listen to. And also the bass is boomy because the subwoofer is in the back so you get this you get this not so firm and boomy bass which is not desired and we listen to this the next track now yeah i also feel like the sound stage here the detail is not on the same level as the other cars i mean the, some of the samples here uh, sounds nice and crisp, but it's just that the whole the whole stereo perspective is not as good as the other cars are trying. And again, some somewhat loose bass. But uh, and as a, this one, for example, I turn off every. Uh, immersion sound and thing everything and also this equalizer everything is flat subwoofer is flat but in other cars especially high-end systems i'll be surrounded by lots of cool sounds and detail here not so much but okay the bass is deep that's a plus nice and deep bass it's just a bit loose and for example i also test this i try to test the same songs over and over again uh, it's no good that it's easy to uh, to scroll here let me see what well, there, there there this song again just like all the other cars i tried again i need to have it almost at 80 percent to get some okay level Because it's so noisy outside, I mean, because of the. You know the the S sounds and the high frequency sounds in the in the voice just feels unnatural. So my final verdict is that 
maybe I ranked this system higher before, but I actually give it only 7 out of 10 points now. So there is some potential to improve it for Tesla. But I have to say, the headlights on the new Model 3 and Y, they are truly awesome. You see, when I catch up with other cars on the road, I feel like my low beam are just uh, much stronger and wider than, for example, this Kona here. Uh, also, from time to time when I, well actually many times, uh, when I catch up with the other Model 3s, I spot that, hey, th that car has some strong headlights and it's the new Model 3 or Model Y. And of course high beam, let me see if I can fire up the high beam, it's not pitch dark yet, but uh, there maybe, boom, also incredible good. The only minus is that it's not adaptive, but this is by far one of the best headlights ever when it comes to the strength and the wideness. Uh, so really, really good. We, we just have to wait for some software update probably that unlocks uh, pixel uh, technology also in Tesla because these headlights, well, <laughs> when you do the light show, it can actually write Tesla on the wall and everything. So it has the pixel capability. It's just that the software is not ready yet. We are getting close to dawn now. So the car predicted uh, that we will arrive here with 18%, uh, you see here. 18.7 oh see this was uh, an estimation done 91 kilometers away and also i did go uh, 10 percent over this uh, no, actually nine percent over the speed limit but the car still managed to calculate it down to yeah i was almost uh, down to the percentage let's see now once we regen a bit then uh, what's gonna be oh very close Look, oh what the heck Okay, and actually, I navigated to Circle K, but we are not going directly to Circle K, but at least at around, around about here. Let's see, what do we get? Ah, uh, 18.7. Okay, maybe didn't count the region. Eh? Wow, but look at it. Okay, 18.8% now. Very good. Now I'm stuck behind the leaf. Sheen. Okay, wow, look at that. Okay, okay. Now we go back to... Um, um, yeah, we had to go back to Nebines to do a full cycle so we can uh, measure the distance. We are at Nebines now. So the consumption was 214 kilometers, but the distance 183. It's supposed to be 182. So do we even bother with correction? I have to calculate. All right, but I need to uh, plug it in and charge a little bit before we go uh, for the 90 test. And then the temperature over here is 3 degrees. But I will set it to 5 degrees Celsius because most of the time it was 5 degrees. We are on the move again. Now the 90 test. We have to cruise at 92 kilometers per hour. It's actually a bit colder now, but we'll see. It seems to be warmer near Mjösen. But okay, so we will drive only to S1 back again. Now we know the, the distance error, which is neglectable. It's probably less than half percent. But uh, okay, so just to show that I did not fast charge that much. Maybe just uh, 5% or I don't remember how much. We'll see that the battery is still semi-cold, 25 degrees Celsius. So we don't have any advantage for heat scavenging there. So try to make this test as realistic as possible without needing to retest everything because we already know that the battery capacity here is 70 kilowatt hour. Actually, we can also see on Scam and Tesla, it also reports uh, when I charged 100% earlier today, it reported at 7. Point uh, 70.9 kilowatt hour but then you get some losses when you discharge it so yes 70 kilowatt hour there is we are getting close to espa now and oh the temperature is rising it was three degrees uh, for the longest time and now it start rising a little bit but look at the consumption here 147 watt hour per kilometer <laughs> okay we have a little bit of downhill but we have almost no wind so uh yeah Hopefully it would be around 150 something on the way back because you have to go uphill, but wow, look at this sunset. It's almost 10 in the evening now and we have some clouds. If it wasn't for clouds and it would look actually even brighter. But to say this camera is very light sensitive. Okay, let's try high beam. Boom! Wait, there's a, there's a truck coming. Okay, okay. Don't want a piece of the truck. The mother trucker. And there's a Tesla. Oh, that's, uh, that's a Model S facelift you can see how weak that light is compared to mine see 
Well, actually, yeah, yeah, you see we're somewhat poor distribution. I just wait for it to go in front. Uh, can you see it? You see, I have way wider low beam than him. And this is some fossil with, uh, yeah, it's a Volvo, okay. Yeah, okay, the Volvo seems to have nice uh, spread on the low beam. We are back in MNS. I recorded all the stats now and I'm preparing to do a charting session at the V3 at Klöfta. And then over there I will do the wrap up. We are now at the Klöfta charting up and this LG battery, remember this is the 70 kilowatt hour net capacity. I think it's around 76 something kilowatt hour total. Uh, it charges way faster now than six months ago, but this is exactly what we've been saying over and over again, that Tesla, they start kind of slow-ish, and then as they gather more data, then they unleash more power. But the charting video will be covered in a separate video. Uh, this video is about uh, range, but just look at the numbers here. So even today with cold-ish weather, uh, okay, it wasn't wet, but at least we had winter tires on. and. It still did it very well. So the consumption today was only nine to ten percent higher than summer consumption. <laughs> wow! And also that kind of range, 452 kilometers or 327. If you compare it against other cars I've tested recently, for example, the Volvo C40, it even has more net capacity than this car. But the C40 is quite thirsty, so we see it. Uh, we get lower range. And then what else? Uh, yeah, uh, the EV6, uh, also lower range, uh, less efficient. And even the BMW iX, which is a pretty big car uh, and a way bigger battery, but that, that one, okay, has similar range. So you see, uh, this car, can do it quite well. When it comes to range, because it has it is so efficient, then it could do it well. And also, I compared it against some other cars I mentioned, like the BMW iX, but remember that the, the Model Y can take more banana boxes than iX. The iX is just big German car, just like the fat e-tron, uh, but uh, this Model Y can take more banana boxes than the fat e-tron and iX. Hmm? Can you think about that? So what is the point of buying a big car, right? Would you just want a big car for the comfort? Okay, fair enough. Then the BMW iX and the Fat e -tron, they are more comfortable, no doubt about it. They have better stereo, okay. But when it comes to space, then the Model Y beats it and it's more efficient. It means that you get more bang for the bucks and the efficiency. And, and then the electricity is kind of expensive nowadays. So, well, but this was about the range and then the Model Y is just boom, range king and also, I'm going to do 1,000 kilometer challenge again. I did it in September last year. It was fairly warm-ish. Uh, and then I should do it as standard that every, at least when it, where it makes sense, range test and 1,000 kilometer challenge needs to be done in summer, warm temperature, but also in winter because, you know, we also have winters here, unless you live in Thailand. But yeah, so that's gonna be interesting. Uh, the charging curve is nicer and flatter now. Ooh. Okay, but anyway, that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.